Hello, my name is Rickard, and in this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to recreate the poster for the card counter in Photoshop. If you'd like to follow along, I have included a link in the description of this video that includes all the assets that I use in the course of this tutorial. It also includes a nice curves preset that gives you the color grade of the poster. So go ahead, download those, and then let's get started. All right, first thing we're going to do is create a new document, and the document's going to be 2000 by 3000, 150 resolution, and the rest will leave at default and hit create. All right, next I'm going to go to view, new guide layout, and let's default this. And we're going to do two columns with no gutter, and we're going to do five rows with no gutter. And then we're going to do a 400 pixel margin all around. And this is just going to help us as we're designing to lay stuff out. All right, next I'm going to go File, Open. And in the Assets folder, there is a document called Queen. This is a scan I did of a playing card. We're just going to copy this with Command-C and then paste with command V. And then I'm going to do command T for transform. I'm going to make this so that it comes into our margin line here. So we'll just line up that corner and then line up at the bottom here. Maybe move it a little more centered, something like this. All right, next I'm going to just clean up these edges. So I'm going to use a gradient tool, hit D to default my colors to black and white. Then I want my foreground color to be white. I want this to be from foreground to transparent. And I want my gradient to be on linear. And then I'm going to start the gradient where the white starts and then end it before the red starts. So just like this, that's going to clean up white there. Just clean up anything from the scan that's in these edges. Just like that. Good. Next, I'm going to do the eyedropper tool and just select this red color. And then here I'm going to add a solid color. It's going to make it my red color. And we'll just hit OK. And then I'm going to double click here. And what I want to do here is I want the red to only go on top of the black. So under my blend if options, this is my underlying layer and I just want the red to blend on top of the black. So what I want to do is pull it out of all the lighter areas that aren't black. So somewhere right around there. And then we're going to hold down option and just split these two so that there's no clipping. But there you go. You can see our black has now turned into a nice red color and that's what I want. Okay, and then the next thing is we're gonna add some blood drops to this, and I got these textures from texturelab.org. Uh, definitely check out that channel if you haven't. He's got some great tutorials on Photoshop. All right, so I'm gonna grab this Texture Labs ink paint, and this is just a drip of paint. And because it's underneath this color fill option, it's also going to get that red coloring applied to it automatically. So we'll put it somewhere here, just kind of bleeding off this. And then I'll just use my lasso tool and just cut out this drop here. So I just want that one drop. We'll do option, click on the mask, and then we'll do file, place embedded. And I'm going to grab the next one. And this one I'm just going to make bleeding off this heart here. And then we'll go file, place embedded again. And this one, we'll add maybe somewhere here. And we can even skew it a bit. So that's the right size there. Looks like it's coming off there. That looks good. And then last one. And this one we'll put in the top right corner here. Oh, 
And I think that looks good. All right, then I'm going to just make a copy of my background layer with Command J and then select all these layers that make up our background and convert them to a smart object. We're going to call this playing card. And I'm going to go to filter, blur, Gaussian blur. We're just going to do a six pixel blur on that. Hit OK. All right, next thing I want to do is add some shading and lighting here. First thing I'm going to do is just select this yellow color, kind of make it uh, brighter. And then I'm going to add a solid color. And for this solid color, what I want to do is make a mask that's kind of a circular color like this. So let's just delete this existing mask, add a new mask, so like that. I'm going to put this on screen and then double click on my mask here to bring up my mask properties. And I'm going to feather this a lot until it's just kind of a light blob, something like that. And then we're going to move this up to right around where our subject is going to be. And it's just going to add a little bit light behind our character. All right, next, I'm going to add another gradient. We'll call this bottom gradient. And for this, I'm going to switch to black. So just D gradient, make sure I'm on foreground to transparent. Here, I want to start at the bottom and go to this top guide right there. It's just like that. And then for this, I'm going to set the opacity to 75. All right, next we're going to do one more solid color. But before I make the solid color, I'm going to make a oval shape that kind of fills up almost my entire frame, but doesn't go outside of any of the edges. And then we'll go here, solid color. It's going to add a black. Hit OK. I'm going to double click the mask again, bring up my properties. I want to invert it and then add about 600 pixels, like a lot. And then with my mask selected, I'm going to do Command T. That's going to bring up my transform. I can make this bigger until I'm just seeing a hint of it in the corners, something like this. And maybe rotate it so that it's a little more prominent on this side. So something like this. Good. I'll hit OK. All right, next, let's bring in our character. I'm going to do File, Place Embedded, and I have this already cut out model PSD. I'm going to go ahead and select that and place it into this file. And I want her head to be right about there. So with that done, I'm just going to hold down the Option key and drag my anchor point to there, and then I can make this bigger. And I want to make her just big enough so that we're not seeing her knee. It's right about there. All right, I'm going to go ahead and turn off my guides. And I want to do a little bit of camera raw. What I need to do is suck out some of the color so that when we apply the color grade on top of the whole thing, it, um, we're not doubling up with the color. Basically, I'm going to suck some of the color out. So let's go to Filter, Camera Raw. And because this is a smart object, we can do it on the smart object. What we're going to do here is add a 0.7 to the exposure, 18 to the contrast. We're going to take the highlights down by 84, increase the shadows by 94, increase the whites by 29, and then increase the blacks by 23, add one point of clarity, and then minus 46 on the vibrance. Also, this photo is a little bit low resolution. So we're just going to go down to our detail here and add some sharpening. So we'll put that around 50%, uh, this around 1.5, and the rest we'll leave. So let's hit OK. Good. Next, I need to make a shadow of her. So to do that, I'm just going to make a copy of this smart object. So I'm going to hold down Option, drag it underneath her, and we'll call this Model Shadow. So for the shadow, I'm going to get rid of the existing smart filters. Let's go ahead and turn off our main model here. First thing I'm going to do is add a color overlay to it. 
And for this color overlay, I'm going to use this color, 001917, or 001917. Let's hit OK, and OK. All right, now what I want to do is I want to put this on multiply. The problem is if I put it on multiply, it's not doing anything because my color overlay is on normal. And if I change my color overlay to multiply, you're going to see we get this weird double multiply going on. So to avoid that problem, what I'm going to do is leave this on normal, but put it in a group. And then we can put the group on multiply and then change the opacity of the group to 70%. So there you have it. Now I have the shadow looking how I want it. I do want to add a little bit of a blur to it. So I'm going to go to blur, Gaussian blur, and we'll leave that same six pixel blur. And let's go ahead and turn her on and then just drag this shadow to the left here. I think I want it somewhere around there. And then I'm going to do Command T and I'm going to skew it a bit. So I'm just going to go like this, kind of drag this bottom down and then maybe zoom out and hold down Shift and just bring the bottom up a little bit. So maybe something like this. And then maybe just drag this corner out so there's a little more separation between the head shape there and her hair. So something like this. Let's hit OK. And then on top of my model, I want to add a little bit of a gradient where the lettering is going to be. So let's go ahead and add a layer. We'll call this Model Gradient. And I'm just going to go gradient. I already have foreground is black, so we'll just do a gradient that goes up about halfway up. I'm going to clip this by holding Option and then bring this to like maybe 50%. Okay, next I want to add a little bit of dodging and burning on her face. So let's add a layer here. We'll call this dodge and burn. Oops. And this layer I'm going to put on soft light. Now when you're doing dodging and burning, you want to use really, really low brush settings so that you can build it up as you work. So let's go on our brush tool. I'm going to right mouse click and under general brushes, I'm going to select this soft brush. And then I'm going to change my opacity to 15 and my flow to 10. And then with my black brush, I'm just going to add a little bit of shadow around her eye here and along her shoulder, kind of just give her face a little more shape. And then maybe on this cheek as well. And then maybe with the white. So I just hit X to switch these two colors to go between dodging and burning. And we'll just add a little bit of highlights here just where her dress is really dark there so something like that all right next I'm gonna add a color grade on top of the whole thing and to do that I'm gonna add a curves layer now I've done a pretty intricate curve that matches the original poster um, and in the assets folder, you'll find it. So you can just go here to load curve, curve presets and then load that curve preset. I already have it loaded. So I'm just going to scroll down here and it's called Polaroid revised. And the reason for that is I based it off of my Polaroid 669, which got me about halfway there, but it's a little too cyan and not enough red in the highlights. So I did some revisions. This is the revised one. This is very close to the original poster and certainly a match for the color grade. So there you go. You can load that and that we'll call our color grade. All right, next I need a little bit of uh, film grain. So let's go ahead and add some film grain. So I'm going to add a layer. We're going to call this film grain. I'm going to go to my color picker and just select a 50%. So you can just go here, 50, make sure these are on zero, and then hit OK. And then I'm going to use Option Delete to fill the layer. I'm going to go to Filter, Noise, Add Noise. And here I want it to be five, uniform, 
and I don't want monochromatic. I do want some color in that noise. Let's hit OK, and then we're going to put this on overlay. So there you go. That's just going to add that noise, which the original poster had. And that pretty much finishes the artwork aspect of the poster. And next, I want to quickly show you how to do the lettering. So for the lettering, let's go ahead and show our extras, meaning our guides in this case. That's just going to show us a little bit better where to put stuff. And let's go ahead and take all of our artwork and put it in a folder called Artwork. I'm just going to click outside my layer so I don't have any layers selected. Go T for my type tool. And we'll start with the small type up here. And for that, we're going to use a font called Core Morant Infant. And if you don't have it, it is included in the assets. And it's also a free font from Google. So you can download it there as well. All right, let's make sure our foreground color is black. And we're going to start at 30 point and then click right up here in the center. And we're going to type Martin score Sezi presents. And then let's select all that text, bring up our character panel. I want to change this tracking to 20. And then I want to take the presents here, just presents, and change this to 20 point. And I want this to be red. So I'm going to go here and kind of just select a red color. And let's add that to the swatches as well so we have it. All right, there you go. And let's just make sure that's centered. That looks pretty good. I'm move that up a little bit. And I think we actually need to move her down just a little bit. So let's select her and the shadow and just move those down a little bit like so. All right, and then we're going to take this hold down option, just drag it down so we have a copy. And then here, I'm going to delete Martin Scorsese, select the presents, and then type Oscar Isaac, like that. And I'm going to make the Isaac 30 points and the Oscar 25. And let's bump that up just a tiny bit. And then we're going to hold down Option, drag that over here. And then we'll select all three of these, click on this, and we're going to distribute these. So we'll distribute them like that. That's just going to make the distance between them equal. And for this copy, we're going to type in tie and then share it in. Just move that over like so, and then hold down Option again, drag this to the right, and we're going to type Tiffany, and then Haddish. And then we'll move this to the left, so it lines up there. All right, and then for the big type, we're going to deselect. Make sure you have your type deselected. Otherwise, as you make changes here, it'll make it to that. We don't want that. so. Deselect there. All right, and then the next font we're going to use is also a Google font, and this font is called Marcellus. So let's select that. We're going to pump this all the way up to 80 points, and I want the text to be white. We'll just type in right about here the. All right, let's select that text, go here, and this I want to be 715 for the tracking. And I also want this, yeah, that looks good. All right, then hold down Option, drag this down, and we're going to type in card. I'm going to select all, and I want to bump this up to 95. And then I'm just going to move this down a little bit. I kind of want the A to cross over her hand here. And then Option again, drag this down to right about there, and we'll type Counter. And then Option one more time, drag it up. This one we're going to change to 20 points, and this is going to be the tagline, Reap What You Sow. And we're just going to select all, and just holding down Option and using the left and right arrows, I can adjust the tracking. I want it to be about the same width as the card. 
So there you go. All right, and then for the card here, I want this to intersect with our hand. So I'm gonna add a mask to this, go on my brush tool, right mouse click and just select a hard brush, kind of make it smaller here and make sure this is on 100 and 100. And then we'll just paint out where this crosses over into her hand like that. And then I'm gonna add a layer, we can call this shadow. I'm gonna clip it to this, go on my gradient tool, hit D to default my colors. I'm gonna go on a radial gradient and just go from about the middle of a wrist to about the top of the A. And that's just gonna add a little shadow there. And probably take that down to about 50%. All right, then lastly, we're gonna do a little cheat to get the credits in here. I'm just gonna go file, place embedded, and I just ripped this off from the original poster and uh, ran a curve on it so that all the background is black. We can just put this on screen, turn off our guides, and voila, there is your card counter poster. So there you have it. That's how you recreate the poster for the card counter in Photoshop. And hopefully in the course of this, you learned some tips, tricks, and techniques that you can use in your own projects. Now, if you did enjoy this video, please subscribe to my channel, leave a like, leave a comment, turn on your notifications, and here's some other tutorials that you can check out. And I'll see you next time. Thank you.